According to research, hearing loss is the leading potentially modifiable risk factor for dementia later in life. So in this video, I'm reviewing the CogniView Thrive, the future of cognitive screening. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. There is a growing mountain of evidence that is linking hearing loss with an increased risk of cognitive decline and ultimately dementia. Now I know that there are some individuals out there who call individuals like me an alarmist because hey, when you get older you get hearing loss and when you get older you're at higher likelihood for developing dementia. However, as data pours in, researchers continue to identify that when controlling for age, the prevalence of dementia is still higher in individuals with a hearing loss versus individuals who do not have a hearing hearing loss. Perhaps the most compelling data released in the last six months linking hearing loss to cognitive decline and dementia is the Lancet Commission's report that not only identified hearing loss as a potentially modifiable risk factor in midlife for developing dementia, at 8%, hearing loss is the single highest risk factor out of the 12 risk factors that were identified in their study. There is also additional research out there that indicates when individuals have their hearing loss treated with hearing aids, that their rate of cognitive decline decreases over time. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, this is very compelling data, and I will link both of these studies in the description. Based on all this research, it's becoming quite clear that your hearing loss could be impacting your cognitive function. However, what most people don't realize is that not only can your hearing loss impact your cognitive function, but your cognitive function can also impact your hearing. You see, hearing requires two forms of processing. It requires bottom-up processing, which is where your cochlea sends information up to your brain with afferent nerve fibers, but it also requires top-down processing where your brain sends information down to your cochlea through efferent nerve fibers. This top-down processing requires cognitive effort, and cognitive factors such as attention, listening effort, memory, multisensory integration, and prediction all impact your ability to hear, especially in complex listening situations. Since hearing loss, cognitive decline, and dementia are so closely linked at this point, you can make the argument that it makes a lot of sense for an audiologist to evaluate your cognitive abilities at the same time that they're testing your hearing. Well, that's exactly why I wanted to test the CogniView Thrive system inside of my clinic. The CogniView Thrive system uses the same FDA cleared technology used by neurologists to test cognitive function. By using the five minute self-administered computerized screening, we can evaluate three domains of cognitive function, including memory, visual spatial, and executive function. We can also evaluate two speed performance parameters, including reaction time and processing speed. Let me explain what each of these mean. For the cognitive domains, memory is your ability to store and use information when needed. Visual spatial is your ability to process and interpret visual information about yourself and your surroundings. Surroundings. Executive function is your ability to concentrate and problem solve. For the speed performance parameters, reaction time is your ability to physically react to situations and processing speed is the time it takes to mentally process a task. The only interaction you have with the computer is the cog wheel that you spin in order to do a variety of tasks. These include word memory, word perception, shape memory, and shape perception. Upon completion of the screening, you are given a score for each of the five domains tested. Green means that you have good ability in that particular domain, yellow means that you have moderate ability, and red means that you have poor ability in a domain. This information can help in a few ways. First, it helps us understand whether or not there is some level of cognitive decline that is potentially being caused by hearing loss. Second, it helps us to identify if that cognitive decline is negatively impacting an individual's ability to hear. Third, the information obtained from the cognitive screening can actually change my recommendations to my patient and change the way that I counsel my patient. Fourth, it can act as a baseline for future testing after treating my patients with hearing aids to see if hearing treatment actually improves their cognitive functioning down the road. And fifth, it helps me understand whether or not I should be referring my patient back to their primary care physician for additional cognitive testing. 
If any of these cognitive domains fall into the green category, then I know that my patient is looking really good from a cognitive perspective to where the hearing loss is not yet impacting their cognitive abilities and their cognitive abilities are not going to have a negative impact on their ability to hear. If they fall into any one of the yellow categories, that's something I'm going to want to keep an eye on over the course of the next three to six months and to see if hearing treatment actually improves these scores. And if any of these domains are in the red category, then I know that I need to refer that individual back to their primary care physician for additional cognitive testing. Now I could see someone make the argument that yeah it's great to have the cognitive information for this individual but how does that actually change anything that I would do in the clinic? Well I see this information as being a lot like the information that I would obtain from a speech and noise test. If I never test someone in a noisy environment I don't know how they're going to actually perform with hearing treatment once they go into a noisy environment. The results of the speech and noise test can help Help me understand how I need to counsel a patient on what their level of expectation should be going into a noisy environment. It can lead me to a recommendation of assistive listening devices like a remote microphone that can help in noisy environments as well. And it can also lead to a stronger recommendation to perform auditory training exercises to help that individual process information better. The more information that I have about my patients above and beyond what I get from just a standard hearing test helps me better identify whether or not I need to perform additional testing and it can also help me make a better recommendation for treatment. Before using the CogniView, I would use the Minicog screening tool, which was great, but it was never sensitive enough to really identify whether or not someone was sustaining a mild cognitive impairment. The Minicog also had low test retest reliability, possibly because of my bias that I introduced into the test because I'm the one who has to administer the test. Not only does the CogniView remove my biases as a tester because the patient self-administers the test through the computerized program, but it also removes biases associated with socioeconomic status, education level, and demographics. A couple other things that I really like about the CogniView is that it's very sensitive, meaning it can identify if there's some level of cognitive decline even before there's a mild cognitive impairment. And it's very repeatable, so you know if there's a change in performance, it is likely due to a change in cognitive function. Now all of these things are great, but there are several things that you should at least be aware of when it comes to cognitive screening using the CogniView. First, you cannot diagnose dementia with the CogniView. The CogniView is a screening tool. So even if you score in the red on every single one of the domains, it does not mean that you have dementia. That means that you should be getting referred back to your primary care physician so your primary care physician can get you the proper testing to identify if you do have dementia. Second, I have not seen any cold hard data that indicates that if you treat your hearing loss with hearing aids, that your scores will improve with the CogniView view testing, even though that there are anecdotal reports stating that there are individuals who have seen improvement in their cognitive view scores when they've treated their hearing loss. Third, some hearing care professionals may use the cognitive view screening results to scare you into buying hearing aids. If someone ever tells you that you are going to get dementia if you do not treat your hearing loss with hearing aids, you need to get up and leave to find a different hearing care provider because that provider is just trying to scare you into purchasing hearing aids from them. And for Fourth, CogniView cognitive screening, at least at the time of this recording, is not being done by a lot of hearing care professionals out there, so it can be very difficult to find someone who actually does it. At the current moment, CogniView does not have a provider locator tool on their website, so it might be worth checking back on their website periodically from time to time, or it might be worth actually calling around the different clinics in your local area to see if any of them have the CogniView. Negatives aside, I think the CogniView Thrive system is the best system out there if you want a full understanding of how your cognition is impacting your hearing and how your hearing is potentially impacting your cognition. At the end of the day, since hearing loss, cognitive decline, and dementia are so closely linked, I think it's just a matter of time before cognitive screening becomes a standard part of audiologic care. But until that time, finding a clinic who can actually evaluate your cognitive performance could be like finding a needle in a haystack. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.